Hey, After Buzzers. I am so excited to introduce you to Patrick Gilmore, the actor that you pretty much all know from Netflix's Travelers, but he's also been in You, Me, Her, Jan, and will be in the upcoming film Undying. Stay tuned. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> Hey, Patrick. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, Mina. I'm so excited to be sitting with you here oh, today. Well, I hope I don't disappoint. No, not at all. And, you know, you have diehard fans because I feel like anyone who enters the sci-fi realm, the fans are so loyal. So you... Yeah. you no stranger to Stargate, but also Netflix's third season of Travelers. That's right. So tell me a little streaming bit. Now. <laughs> yeah, streaming now. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about the show and about time travel or what you know, what you can tell us about time travel. Uh, I know nothing about time travel <laughs> other than what I've seen on TV and in the movies. But the show is about, it's a different take on time travel. Uh, the consciousness from people in the future gets transported to people in, in the present. And so it's a very different style of, of show, very much involved with the, the, the lives that these people take over more than, than you know, sci-fi and ray guns and stuff. So what I thought was fascinating is that within the first week of this show premiering on Netflix, 12 million viewers tuned in. Is that what? That's accurate. Oh, I mean, that's it the first time on the I've internet, so... Oh, well, then it's, the internet doesn't it's lie. It's gotta be. It's gotta be true. <laughs> yeah, that's but right. But is that, is that surprising at all to you, like, the fan base that this show has garnered? Um, no. I mean, I'm a fan of the show, so, I mean, any sort of accolades it gets, uh, I, I'm quite comfortably going, yeah, of course. But uh, I don't know what 12 million means. I mean, you, you could tell me 10,000. I'd be like, ooh, that's a, that's a <laughs> lot of people. I have no idea. What was the auditioning process like for you? Um, it, there was a bit of pressure because Brad Wright, who created the show, wrote the role for me, mm -hmm. and he told me that on my on my screen test, just as I was about to go in, he said, "Oh, by the way, it's uh, written for you, so don't screw it up." So, so yeah, it was a bit nerve wracking, but I, I, it was written for me, so I knew the 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 cadence of the character and the like. I say the melody of the character, so it it was in my wheelhouse. So, for the people who haven't watched seasons one or two. Um, what can you tell them about your character and your character arc? Uh, I'm kind of the audience's entry into this world. I'm, I'm the guy who doesn't know what's going on. I'm the guy who's, who's experienced it all along with the audience. Um, and in season three, they kind of make reference to the idea that my character is kind of symbolizes the reason why they came back to fix the future because I'm a, a very positive, very hopeful character to a fault. How does this show um, kind of stand apart from classics like Back to the Future or any movie that's been done about time travel? Because there's been a lot. A lot of them center around romance, like The Time Traveler's Wife. Yeah. But um, how does this one stand alone? They they take the the stance of uh, it's very reality based. It's very rooted in reality. So I always say if you watch it with the sound off, you wouldn't know it was a sci-fi show. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no flying DeLoreans or, you know, time machines or dinosaurs. It's it's a very accessible show, accessible sci-fi show for people who don't like sci-fi, I guess. It's, um, yeah, it's a, just a very rooted, dark, grounded, you know, Back to the Future is very colorful. So I have a, a time travel related question for you. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> if present day Patrick Gilmore were to go back to young Patrick Gilmore, yeah. what would you tell him? Stop drinking. <laughs> it gets you nowhere. I learned that too late. No, um, God, I don't know. I, because I, I've kind of held on to that mentality of a, of a young me. And, you know, I still dress like I did when I was 10. And, uh, and I'm still doing make-believe. So, I mean, keep doing what you're doing, little Gilmore. So 10-year-old you would be wearing that shirt right there? Um, this Jan shirt? Jan. Yeah. Uh, no, but I had a jean jacket exactly like this, and I had my mom sew this Patches. little patch on it. And yeah. so I bought this jacket a couple years ago. I said, Mom, could you do the same thing you did when you were 10 years old, when I, I was 10? I love it. Yeah. I love it. I mean, it's good to embrace your inner child. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I've based and, my whole career on it. And fashion is circular. It always comes back. Right. Trends always come back. So if anything, you are ahead of your time right now. Thank you. Is this the BuzzFeed <laughs> of uniform? The black and the, the yellow? The after buzz. You know, this was totally unintentional. After buzz, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Jan. 
Uh, the woman? <laughs> not, not the woman. We know that the that it's based on the woman in that. Yes, the... Jen Arden is is Canada's sweetheart, and she's a, a musical uh, icon. And uh, now she has a show based on her very, very Curb Your Enthusiasm style, uh, kind of a, a version of the truth. And uh, it's just a full out comedy, and so it's it's been a lot of fun. Everyone knows her as a as the incredible voice, but she's quietly one of the funniest Canadians in entertainment right now. So I just happen to be tagging along with her. What makes something funny to you personally? Uh, when it's true, there's nothing funnier than the truth. I mean, that's farcical kind of over the top, um, surrealistic stuff doesn't kind of make me laugh. It's the stuff that that is so true that we can all relate to it. And where can people find Jan? Uh, not, not the first. <laughs> no, 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 we're not. Her address is. Uh, it'll be on CTV uh, sometime this spring, so there is an exact date, and then eventually in streaming, and yeah, I'll be posting a lot about it, so. Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out yeah, then. I'll tell you. Um, so this isn't the only comedy that you're involved with. You also have a recurring role on You, Me, Her. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, it's uh, Audience Network, which is DirecTV, and uh, we're about to start filming our fifth season, but our fourth hasn't even aired yet. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun about uh, polyamory and uh, all that you know good stuff for <laughs> for conservative folk. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's just it's a really loose, very uh, sharp written comedy, and I play kind of a dim-witted uh, bartender mm -hmm. who uh, who loves to stick his nose in other people's business. Those are the best types of people. Yeah, that's you the get kind to of bartender know, I was. Yeah, you get to know everything about what's going on with everyone. Yeah. So why not? <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about the influence of being Canadian, because I've never met a mean or an angry Canadian in my life. Was there ever, like, any sort of, like, acclimation process for you to adjust to life in America? <laughs> <laughs> no, I find Americans are, are friendlier than, you know, than... Then I found people in, in Canada. Maybe I'm just used to people in Canada. But uh, no, I find Americans really, uh, really approachable. And they're the type of people that will smile at you in the, in the street. But where I've lived in places like Vancouver, that's, you know, people don't really, they kind of stick to themselves. So I, 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 you're meeting the wrong Canadians. <laughs> <is what> I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm meeting the, the outliers. Yeah, really I, nice I'm being Canadians. a real jerk to you right now, in fact. <laughs> This is us being yeah. jerks. No, I, lo I love it. <laughs> um, so you also have a fascination with planes, and you almost have your pilot's license, right? Yeah. And I've been saying almost to have my pilot's <laughs> license for a couple of years now, but yeah. My dad was a pilot, and so I grew up in small planes, and uh, I just assumed I'd end up flying them one day, and so I, I started the, the process. So I'll eventually get there. And you did get to meet Harrison Ford? I did. Okay, what was that like? Tell uh, me about that. It was very brief, but uh, it slowed down. Time slowed down for me. Felt like an hour. It was probably about 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was in an event that he was at, and I just wanted to approach him and thank him for being uh, an influence on me to being an actor. Also a pilot as well. So it was an aviation event. An almost pilot. An almost pilot. Yeah. <laughs> That's not as sexy, is it? You should have said thank you. I said, hi, I'm an almost pilot. <laughs> I'm almost handsome. Uh, so it was, uh, they say don't meet your heroes, but th that couldn't have gone better. He was so gracious and uh, and cool. Yeah. And then you flew off into the sunset. I floated then... off, definitely. Floated. <laughs> yeah, I was on cloud nine. <laughs> I, I, very great pun, by the yeah. way. I feel like I've met my match, pun-wise. <laughs> um, so... Are there any other projects that you want to plug? Anything else you're super excited about coming up? Uh, I'm super excited about 2019. I mean, we're still we're still fresh here, aren't we? <laughs> it's like 10 days in, so uh, you know it's going to be a busy year, and I'm I'm just looking forward to that. What are your resolutions? Damn it! Why did you have to? What were my <laughs> resolutions? Uh, uh, maybe stop apologizing. It's a very Canadian trait. Sorry. So. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> this get weird. Oh no, no. Um, anything? Any hopes for 2019? Like, if you could have your ideal dream come to life this year, what do you want to see? Because we're gonna make this happen right now. This Are is we? Visualization. Oh, this is like a, this is a what vision we're doing board right now. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to. A couple years ago, I, I I I did something crazy and I went to Africa and I climbed a mountain and I'd like to do something as crazy this year. Uh, you know, insurance. You know, <laughs> clear, clearing it with insurance people is one thing, but yeah, I'd like to go see a different country and, and kind of 
because I feel like I work to be able to do crazy things like that, even though the work is a dream. It's a step to, to experiencing life. Ooh, that got deep. It's going to happen for you. Thank you. I feel Nina, it. You already put it out into the AfterBuzz universe. From your lips to God's yeah. ears. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for being here with hey, us. Hey, thanks for having me, Mina. Where can everyone find you on social media? Uh, at Patrick Gilmore. That kind of covers it all. Perfect. Well, right. thank you so much. And you guys can find me on Instagram at Mina Makes Magic. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to follow Patrick. He is a really funny and fun person to be with. Oh. Catch him everywhere. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.